measures. For more, let's bring in Jacob Frankel. He's the former SEC Division of Enforcement Senior Counsel. Victor Jones is the CEO of DOE. It's good to see you both. Uh, Mr. Frankel, to you first. What do you make of the SEC's action here? Well, what I make of it is, is uh, Robin is a disruptor. Um, and, you know, and when you have a disruptor that really does change the marketplace, the SEC is going to look competitors are drawing a lot of attention to a lot of attention to the company. Fact is, they settle. What the company is trying to do is really position itself in advance of the IPO to be effective. You know, as I read the SEC case, you know, w w that to me is a company really getting out in front on its skis really getting out ahead of itself, not having the, the, the proper uh, comprehensive compliance procedures in place. When I look at the Massachusetts case, I'm seeing issues around fiduciary duty and, again, disclosures, you know, suitability, you know, in, enabling people to come into the market who really shouldn't be there or shouldn't be there in the instruments that, that they're trading. And I think what the company has done is they've taken a lot of steps to make sure they have the proper safeguards, in particular staffing, at the general counsel and compliance level, recognizing that the company needs to change those practices going forward. But the fact is, it's a settled SEC case. It's an administrative proceeding. It's over. And now they're going to try to wrap up Massachusetts as yeah. well. What about the IPO? What, what does all of this mean for it, if anything? You know, I, I don't think it's going to impact the IPO at all because, you know, I, I really like the fact that there was an independent compliance monitor or, or professional who's, who's been put in to basically sort of sit in the middle to make sure the company is implementing procedures to provide protection to investors, to have the safeguards that are necessary. So I really, I really do not see this having any negative impact on the IPO. I really see this as the company, as the, the fact that it's probably good for the company that this is all happening before the company goes public, before the IPO itself. So it could say, that's in the past. This is the new Robin Hood going forward with the proper discipline and structure in place. Victor, how, how are you seeing all of this as someone who is very much in this industry? I think, I believe your dough is a competitor to Robin Hood. I mean, is that really an excuse that they, that they weren't transparent enough in the beginning about how they were monetizing their trades and their business and a pretty regulated industry? Well, look, a couple of things. It's it's highly important, critically important to be upfront about how you plan to monetize in a highly regulated industry or if you're not in a highly regulated industry. So that's first and foremost. I would agree Robinhood is a disruptor. At the end of the day, they were they forced old brokers into a new world. They forced this industry out of the dark ages and into a new digital world. They opened up the pathway for companies like ours to come in and compete and to build businesses in ways that we felt were materially better at the end of the day. Maybe the idea that this kind of uh, cloud is not hanging over their head for the IPO is a good thing. I, I do not think the idea that uh, the SEC found that customers could put, could have potentially made or lost, I should say, $34 million um, is, is materially a good thing. I would say, at the end of the day, customers in the industry should look at this as a net positive because what it means is that there's a regulatory framework that's flexible enough to allow innovation. It allows disruptors like Robinhood, like myself, and like other firms within this industry to come in and transform the industry. But... It also makes sure that any offender that's not acting within the best interest of the customers is going to have a material consequence for that and that there's a framework in place to protect the customer's long-term best interest. With respect to Massachusetts complaint, I think that actually fundamentally it is really, really important to the question of how we develop mobile applications. What I mean by that is nobody should be shamed for creating beautiful designs. Nobody should be shamed for creating better aesthetics or removing friction from a user's experience. Nobody should be shamed for utilizing tactics that make something that typically is daunting uh, more approachable for the everyday individual. However, the crux of the matter here is purpose yeah. and intent. Purpose and intent. If your purpose Victor is to increase financial education, that's one thing. If it's to increase churn in the account, that's another. I, I get what you're saying there, but, but back to your SEC point and, and the criticism around Robinhood. How do you guys do it at Doe? Are you, do you, are you also making profits from the payments from the order flow? Are you selling these trades to high frequency traders? How, how commonplace is that? And is the problem here that they just weren't upfront about it? 
Yeah, and that's that's the thing that I want to be clear about. Yes, we've always been upfront about how we monetize our business through order rebates, through interest on cash, through subscription services, through debit interest and securities lending. We've always been upfront about that. The crux of this matter is not payment for order flow. I think the payment for order flow <laughs> conversations is a lot less sexy than people want it to be. At the end of the day, order flow is a commodity. Almost all brokers choose to monetize the commodity and pass the savings on to users which at the end of the day is responsible for lots of new innovative brokerage business models. But the crux of the matter is you have to respect the regulatory framework. You have to alleviate conflicts of interest. You have to prioritize BEX execution. And if you do that, at the end of the day, the payment for order flow conversation is relatively vanilla. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.